So industrial control systems might be another area of interest to you. Um, these are where we're talking about, you know, factory and industry uh, type situations that are typically controlling pretty heavy duty stuff with these electronic modules. And when we say industrial control system, it actually encompasses a massive amount of infrastructure. Um, at the higher level, you effectively have as part of a network, you might have like a corporate network, right? So this would be like part of corporate IT that connects into like managers overseeing stuff. Um, but where it gets interesting is normally on the, the scatter or the supervisory network. Um, and so this is normally like a, uh, a network that's more directly in control of, you know, a plant or multiple plants is pretty common. Um, this, so the SCADA side of it is borderline uh, standard IT. It's running, you know, there's custom protocols, there's custom software, all that stuff. Um, but in terms of the hardware, it's very similar to uh, standard computer networking gear. Um, on the, the lower side, I'll call it, um, it's normally running these little modules that we'll look at in a second called programmable logic controllers. Um, they're getting closer to embedded computers. Um, so these are things that are a lot uh, similar to the other devices we talked about. Um, so a programmable logic device um, looks, they look like all sorts of different stuff, but here's one example, right? You have sort of uh, normally like a computer side as well as some different output modules that you can plug together because you want to control different things, have different switches. Um, so this programmable, oops, I don't know why I said device, this should say controller, sorry. I was thinking of something else when I wrote this. Um, programmable logic controller, um, then, you know, it could drive motors, it could have sensor inputs. Um, and this itself could actually be, there's a programming style uh, called ladder logic that's, um, you know, May, it would be very uh, different for you to look at. You can take a look at it uh, out of interest. But what we're really interested in is what's inside them, which turns out to often be like embedded computers. Um, I talked briefly about PLCs when we looked um, at the Stux Stuxnet attack, right? So they are a very uh, potentially vulnerable area because they can directly control a lot of pretty serious gear. Um, so the PLC itself, right, is... Uh, controlled then by that SCADA network. So um, in the previous one, I mentioned there's this supervisory network. So we call this the supervisory control and data acquisition. Um, so this is the SCADA uh, network. So if you look at PLCs, or if you look into this, you'll typically see this called either SCADA hacking um, or in industrial control system ICS hacking. Um, so if you're looking for resources, that's really where you should be going for. Um, as a cool example of this, so this is the Aurora generator test. Um, this was an example of how it's possible for a uh, cyber attack to cause physical damage. And so this actually kind of destroyed a very large um, industrial generator. And the question was, you know, could this type of cyber attack be used in warfare because it's actually causing severe damage to a grid? Um, it's hardly hypothetical. So there is a, a power grid attack in 2015 in Ukraine. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a really interesting book actually written about it. So if you're curious, I, I'd recommend uh, checking this out. It goes through quite a bit of, um, you know, not, not just the technical side, but uh, how it happened, how it was discovered, all that stuff. So it's a pretty interesting, um, pretty interesting topic. But really briefly, you know, this was a pretty multi-pronged attack on the, the uh, power grid. Right, and so you had a lot of this being like classic hacking, right? So compromising of the corporate network and from there trying to, to pivot into the SCADA network. Um, and some of this wasn't, you know, super, uh, I don't wanna say complicated, but it was stuff like there was a remote control applications running. And so hackers were physically, you know, just like clicking the buttons, taking control of the mouse, locking out the local operators um, and just turning off stuff. Uh, notably afterwards, they actually destroyed a lot of the infrastructure. So um, after the attacks executed, they shut down generator stations and stuff. They also were wiping servers, um, you know, and workstations. They were disabling uh, switches and routers where they could. Um, and the idea was to, you know, shut it down, but then prevent people from reopening. Uh, so this is a really serious potentially damaging attack if it's executed um, you know, with a lot of resources behind it 
as this Ukrainian power grid cyber attack was. Um, so for these networks, you know, even though they're high cost, so when we looked at consumer electronics, we said, ah, they're pretty low cost stuff, so it's limited. Um, these are pretty high cost products, but they're extremely niche, right? So they may not have had that extensive validation. They may not be running the latest updated version of operating systems and, and things like that. Um, the other main issue with ICS and SCADA systems is you often have very old systems that suddenly become internet connected. Um, so you have a, a system that's running some remote power plant and someone says, hey, we should centrally control this. Um, and that's done without considering, you know, what happens if an attacker gets access to the central control point um, or even really, you know, like, well, what happens if someone uses a bad password that's really easily guessed? Um, so the internet connectivity just gets added quickly without considering how you properly protect that. Um, the, the caveat, you know, with all this is we're not going to cover this very much at all because um, a small part of ICS is actually embedded systems. Majority of the attack is sort of more standard cybersecurity work. So even though it involves very, very serious um, devices and very, very serious hardware, right, that's of interest to us in computer engineering and electrical engineering, um, the majority of this attack is actually very similar to sort of standard, um, you know, cyber attacks. Um, at higher level networking protocols and stuff like that. So what we'll talk about in this class will be relevant, you know, in general for it and will be especially relevant for the embedded side, um, but we won't go into a lot of detail um, of the actual sort of networking attacks and things like that that would be common in um, computer security. Um, so if you're interested to sort of get an idea, uh, there's a few different resources available. There's sort of a book that um, goes over uh, some of, and especially, you know, what is the um, terminology? What do these systems look like? Because this might be totally new to you. Uh, but if you you think you might be interested in it, right, uh, this is a pretty good book that will help you get sort of a first look at what the systems look like, what the different, um, you know, terminology is, and where you can then go for a little more detail on this.